Hola, namaste. Welcome to our podcast, Mental Health in the Ethnic Communities, organized by APNA Network NZ. My name is Shirlene Prasad. I am the clinical practice leader of ASHA Services at Asian Family Services. And today with us, we've got Mr. Shaban Shah, who throughout his professional career has been a huge part of the education sector and the sports sector. So, Mr. Shah, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Bulare. My name is Saban Shah. I was, I was born in Fiji on, uh, on the island of Banwalebu in Nasarwanga, Bua. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your involvement in the sports side of things? Well, sport has been in my veins. Mm-hmm. While we were young child boys, we were mm. grazing cattle in the jungle. Uh-huh. Whenever, whenever there was a short of plain place for us to play, we used to get lemon and use, squeeze the lemon, make it soft and make the soccer ball and make and play. Play soccer ball with lemon. Lemon, mm-hmm. yeah, and then play. Then gradually, it, it had been so much so in my vein that whenever I had in the village there was a soccer ball somebody had, I would find a place in the afternoon, time in the afternoon to go at their home and play a little bit of soccer. Mm-hmm. No matter how far. I remember when I was seven years old, I used to go even a mile away from my home to play soccer with even the adults. Mm-hmm. When the adults were playing, I used to go and just stick around. Mm. And then I for. In, in every school, in primary school or secondary school, I always represented the school team. And then when I was at Nathino Teachers Training College, I, was, I played for Super Rep for two years. And then finally, uh, for, uh, when I went to Lambasa, I played for Lambasa for 10 years. Mm, okay. And then for Bua, I played for about five or 10 years. And then I was in soccer capacity right through my life mm-hmm. till today. Mm. I am still coaching my teams, soccer teams. Mm. I am coaching my grandson now, understand? He, mm-hmm. uh, and he, is, he still heads and kicks balls. I see just like a Messi does it. Uh-huh. Uh. Uh-huh. So it is in my veins. Mm. I was even selected for Fiji. Wow. But I didn't, didn't go and play because of certain reasons, but I was selected for Fiji. Mm-hmm. And Fiji Football Association has included me as one of the legends of Fiji soccer mm-hmm. in the Hall of Fames. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, that is that is quite a mm. prestigious achievement. Congratulations. Mm. So, Mr. Shah, you know, um, seems like from what you say, it sounds like you're very passionate about soccer. And That's you've, true. You know, you've been, I guess, playing soccer for a long time in different capacities. Mm. And usually people who, you know, sports people, people who are very fit are usually perceived as someone who you know doesn't have any issue because they look well and no one really talks about you know how they're feeling if they they're not doing okay emotionally so in your you know personal experience what does mental well-being look like to you what i could say if a person plays sports of Mm. any kind Mm. that is such a kind of relaxation that you will never find in anything Uh uh-huh so uh, even any person what does who, that mean that realization he feels relaxed and feel, feels comfortable feels relaxation okay uh, so sport is one thing understand which you can divert a person from any kind of illness and can tra- uh, and can transform the person from sick as a sick person to a very well mm. uh, well uh, done up person mm-hmm. sports can do that Okay, is that because... I can feel it myself when I, I used to feel a little bit unhappy, a little bit lazy or something was not working well with me. I used to go for a run. Mm-hmm. Is that because it it encompasses a, a certain level of discipline that you have to do to... Very, very true. Mm-hmm. Discipline plus also discipline plus also it helps your nervous system too. Mm. It helps your nervous your body. You take control of your body. Mm-hmm. At that level of physical, you know, you're yeah. working out. Your right. body is getting that level of physical exercise. Right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That, 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 uh, that is, so physical health is, is one aspect right. of overall well-being. Right. Yeah. There's also emotional, mm. psychological, social, our connection with our loved ones. Right. And um, spiritual. 
Very true. Whatever that means to different people. So, yeah. you know, as as a sports person who has always looked after their physical health, has been quite disciplined and has been quite, you know, um, disciplined in terms of exercising, having regular works out, workouts. What are your thoughts on, um, I guess, what does mental well-being mean to you when you're not, you know, what and what are some of the things that people can do to improve their mental well-being? For me, what mental health well-being means, actually mm. it means the person is well-organized, he could, he could know what he is mm. and what he is doing, and he remains himself well controlled of his own self. All right, and then the, I think that that will help him. That all sports can only thing that can bring him to do that level. Uh -huh. Plus, also I think the love of the parents, love of the people. Mm. People must look and respect the people who are sick. Mm. Yes. They, have, they must respect them, and they must see. They must see, get into their shoes and feel how that person feels, and then they will be able to appreciate mm -hmm. things. So it's about understanding, understanding that person yes, and, and yeah. without judgment. Without judgment, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And in order to do that, when someone's not feeling well emotionally, mm. it's very important for them to reach out right or, or to talk to someone mm. about it. So in our culture, right. and in, you know, we, we grow up in our in, in, in being Fiji and Indian, growing up in Fiji, mental health is something that's not talked about. Mental right. health is something that's not normalized. Yeah. I remember a child I was teaching in class five at the time I was a primary school teacher. Mm, yeah. He had a problem like that. Uh, his name was Sharda. He he wasn't um he wasn't well emotionally? Yes, not well emotionally. Okay. I used to sit down with Sharda every day in the morning and sit down and do some work and then I would take I used to take him for sports. Mm, mm. Take him for sports. Okay. And, and and to my knowledge, before I left, Sarda was picking up very well. And later on, if I was to cross his home to go uh, at any time, I always would think Sarda used to live here. Hmm. I still think of that boy. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So he he got involved in sports, and that helped. True. Okay. Hmm. All right. But you know, some some people may not. You know, they may not. It might they might not be that passionate about sports. They may you know may work out, but they may not be that passionate about sports. But they can do the level. walking. Yes, exactly. They can so do the walking. You can take them for a walk. Exactly. So mm. it, it's being physically active is what it means to that individual, right? right it's very individual. Gardening. Mm, absolutely. Ah. Yeah. And sport is not only soccer and rugby. Yeah. There are varieties of sport that a person may like. Mm -hmm. Get involved. Even you can play carrom board with him. Yes. Uh, this kind of games that can you get involved. Get him involved. Mm. Get him involved. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for your time. Before I let you go, I just wanted to ask if you had any tips for our audience listening in in, in terms of how they can help with their mental wellness. What I can say is that every individual must be looked like, uh, looked as an individual. We must not look down upon them. We must respect them. We must love them. Mm -hmm. And without these kind of things understand happening, the people will feel neglected. Mm -hmm. And once a person is neglected, he is demoralized. Absolutely. We need we need to we need to help him to come up mm. in life, and so that we can be jovial and helpful. Absolutely, they, they don't feel isolated don't and alone. Don't feel isolated. Yes. Absolutely. So they should be the part of so the family. Much. Yeah. Yes, mm. and then all it all comes to building that connection, right? Beautiful. and then then they won't feel they won't feel reluctant to reach out for support. Right, true. Okay, thank you so much, right. Mr. Shah. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, Apna, for having me with this short, short debate without my knowledge. <laughs> thank you. Okay, in the first segment we had Mr. Saban Shah. In the second segment we have with us Mr. Krish Naidu. Thank you, Krish, for coming. Thank you, Shelin, for having me on the program. And I'd uh, just like to say congratulations to Apna TV and uh, uh, Asha for putting this mental health series together. And it's a pleasure being here. And um, so my background is in education. I'm a senior lecturer and I work with a lot of international and New Zealand domestic students. Uh, I'm also the president for Fiji Gimit Foundation New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I sit on a number of education community boards as uh, trustees and patrons. And I'm a very passionate um, advocate for Fiji Indian heritage identity, mm -hmm. as well as domestic violence. Thank you so much. Now, what does well-being mean to you, Krish? 
Um, to me, well-being is um, you know physical well-being as well as um, you know spiritual well-being, mm. um, but also just having uh, you know peace in your mind mm-hmm. um, that you're in the right space. Um, so it's uh, it, it is a very dynamic concept, as you know. And um, one day you can be feeling good, and the mm. other day you know you're not feeling that great mm-hmm. for a number of circumstances that may be impacting your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, well-being kind of cut across all age groups and and demographics. Um, and whether you're first generation, second generation in New Zealand, or you're born in New Zealand or from Fiji, uh, we all go through this cycle and emotions every day. Mm-hmm. Okay, that thank you. That was very comprehensive. What does mental well-being mean to you? Um, if we take that component out of the whole well-being, to me, mental well-being is um, feeling at peace, being happy, mm. um, having less stress in life, um, being in a space where you can enjoy life um, without stress, um, without stigma, uh, where you're connected socially to people. Uh, because when I see people with poor mental health, they kind of go into hiding, you know, mm. and mm. there's also stigma around it. They don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it spills into other areas of their life, their family life, their work mm-hmm. life, relationships. So, you know, it's being at peace and being happy, you know. Mm. Uh, but it's difficult because we're living in a, uh environment where we are surrounded by a lot of issues, cost of living, mm. you know, COVID going on. Um, yeah. And you know life is tough, mm. uh, so, and it's tough for everyone, whether you're rich or poor, you know. Mm. Absolutely. So, mental wellness or mental health does not mean that you don't experience these challenges. It means that we have the coping skills, Absolutely. emotional skills, and resources to yep. deal, deal with, with our it, emotions yep. when we do experience these challenges. Yep. And like you mentioned, with COVID, and you know, with COVID comes a whole lot of other things that impact us and impact families, yep. impact our communities. Um, so when we um, in your personal, um, I guess, um, when you if you're talking about what are some of the things that you can do to look after your mental well-being, what would that be in your personal capacity? Yes, I think um, you know, having some time for yourself, mm-hmm. um, for some self-care every day. You know, it could be exercise. Mm. Uh, I could be going for yoga, going to a spa, going to the gym, just meeting up with friends. You know, for a kick around in the park, mm-hmm. going for a walk. Yeah, um, and you know, not just within your family circle, but also your friends. Mm. Um, and also, you know, I think um, looking after other people as well, you know, because not everyone has got access and they're privileged to have that friend circle or mm-hmm. that social connection, you know. Mm-hmm. And we know this from elders that we visit. Um, sometimes the elders are living by themselves uh, and their children are not in New Zealand or they're living in other parts of Auckland mm-hmm. and they don't have that regular contact. Mm. Okay. And what are the, some some of the things that you have seen with your experience, you know, going out in the community that you've seen that may prevent people from seeking help or seeking out support? Well, I think one of the things is that, uh, you know, while we have done a lot of work around educating people about what options are out there, mm. people still, there's still a lack of knowledge around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people think, because what has happened, I'm not going to Fiji, man, now we've grown up with, a problem here, you deal with it, you make it strong, you know, and, um, and, and so we kind of think it's a personal thing. Mm-hmm. We have to grow and just reading motivational books and watching YouTube series and things to, it's not a coping strategy. It could help, mm. but people need to know there's professional support available, uh, such as what you guys provide. Uh, and there are people you can talk to, mm. people who can understand your language. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the more we got to keep doing that, um, but also, you know, there are a lot of other organizations out there. Like you say, for example, there's a lot of senior groups mm. that people can connect to. Mm. Um, and sometimes people don't know about it, you know. Absolutely. And it's our responsibility as uh, community leaders, as uh, people who manage these organizations to get out there and, and mobilize, you know, our support and get people on board, you know, so that we can provide that help. Mm, absolutely. And you also mentioned there's a lot of shame and stigma. Yes. Yep. Which are key barriers to people reaching out for support? It's, yes, and it's always been there, mm. um, and more work needs to be done in that area. Mm-hmm. And I think um, you know it's also even educated people we know um, who are doing well in life, who are well paid. Mm. Um, they don't want to seek help sometimes because they feel um, they don't get exposed, kind of thing. Or this person is having a problem, you know. Mm. 
and and they don't want people to know about it mm. um so and and people can get into substance abuse and and other things to cope up which mm. is not very healthy. healthy yeah yeah absolutely it's it's because people have this belief that if they share their you know personal issues it might be shared with some other people that that might they might know so it's about face saving yes um, also about trust issue you know hum log mein family mein community mein ek issue hai na ki are iske bataega ye iske bataiye uske bataiye you know and that so people try and keep it within themselves and within a very small tight circle you know mm-hmm. mm. absolutely and even if it's shared within that tight circle which is good because they're bot- not bottling it up that people in that tight circle may not have all the resources to support this person absolutely. completely yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and and that's why it's also important to address that issue of confidentiality that you talked about. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. And, and and people do sometimes take these issues to social media as mm, well. You know, mm. um, they write a comment, they write a story about their life, um, and sometimes they also f- get negative reactions to it. You know, um, and it could also end up in a bit of bullying because mm. someone else knows they're talking about this person, that person. So it is not easy, you know, no. uh, and we kind of feel for people. Yeah. who who want to share information but they're also afraid of uh, mm. the backlash you know mm. absolutely because it's it's yeah it's there's that element of being vulnerable and mm. yeah yes correct yes, absolutely and you talked about unhealthy coping mechanisms so it's i guess a cultural thing as well growing up when mental health is not normalized it's not talked about and people may not have healthy coping skills or emotional skills to deal with in uh, challenges and then turning to things like alcohol or drugs or gambling as a way to cope yes. but these are unhealthy coping strategies yes absolutely mm. and these are the things we know about in the literature from other cultures but our people are also doing that you know absolutely yeah. and um you know the the regular socialization through kava mm. um, alcohol i mean we are all guilty of it at times you know mm. um but i guess these are short term solutions really and it it's on the day it will help you but it just creates more problem for the long term yeah okay thank you so much for the useful information that you've shared with us crush before we finish do you have some tips for our audience today yeah i think more so that i just wanted to say to our community that you know domestic violence is in increasing in our community mm. and i know this um but also as interpret in the court i you know do cases where domestic violence is an issue and i think it is said you know um that this is happening and i think we just need to be careful in the way we behave or improve our attitudes around um consent around respectful relationships uh even within the teenage groups you know mm. um and be aware of how we manage our social media and how we do, deal with people and just know that there's help out there mm-hmm. uh, but also know that the new zealand law is quite strict and don't get into the wrong side of it you know mm. because it can further ruin uh, your life mm-hmm. you can go get into a lot of trouble um mm-hmm. so just look out for each other and um you know support each other but also um be aware that um our the, the way we've been doing things back in fiji you know back in india our cultural ways uh sometimes it may not be you know well liked in Israel under mm. the law mm. yeah so don't get on the wrong side <laughs> especially with uh, the festive season coming up mm-hmm. uh, it can be a period of anxiety you know mm. with cost of uh, living crisis issues going on so um just reach out for support and help there's a lot of community organizations out there who have the capacity to help and also provide guidance to professional support and counseling that uh, organizations like uh, yours do Thank you. Thank you so much, Krish, and thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, thank you so much and keep up the good work, uh, Shalin, and uh, thank you once again to Apna and um, Asha Service for putting this together. Uh, it's a great service to the community and you guys should be commended for that. Oh, thank you so much. Um like you heard our conversations today, it's you know, we all face challenges. It's and it's okay to reach out for support. So, if you're experiencing, if you're not feeling good emotionally, you're not alone. Please don't hesitate to reach out for support. Our helpline number is 0800-862-342 and you can press 6 for Hindi to speak to one of the Asha Services um counselors. Thank you so much.